is one thing. When I was now, my second day after being born again, you can go ahead and have your seat. I, I was taken to, uh, to this gentleman and I loved him so much, never saw him, never met him before. And I was told, come see this guy, talk to him. It's gonna be an encouragement to him. And I sat there with him for four hours just talking. I was two days old in my salvation. And he kept on talking about how Jesus came to him and healed him. And I had never understood until he narrated this story and told me how he was locked up in a sanatorium, basically in a mental ward, just given up, just bound by the enemy. And they had just let him to die until a pastor just came in now my former pastor in my former home in my former church and laid hands on him and this man was completely healed for four good hours he narrated how jesus was just good to him if there's any one profound thing i know i took in from that this is several years ago is that never ever this is what he said you can go anywhere in this world anything can be taken away from you and everything else can be done to you but don't ever ever lose this confidence that Jesus loves you and he loves you so much. And I want you to have that confidence this evening, wherever you are, whatever you're facing, Jesus will always and will always love you. He doesn't change position in any way. So don't ever think or let the enemy lie to you that you're far away from the love of God. He loves you so much. Can we bow down and pray? Father, Lord, I thank you. I bless you, Lord, for the confidence that we can have, Father Lord, and we have this evening, Lord, in knowing that we love you and that you loved us more than we loved you, God. Because that's written in the scriptures, Lord. Before we loved you, you first loved us. And that's why you forsook the throne, Lord, in heaven and came and died for us, of which, God, you know I'm a great recipient on this side of heaven. Lord, I don't know why he chose me, but it surely confirms to me, Lord, just as it confirms to other brothers and sisters this evening that you love them. That's the same love, Lord. Does it mean absence of trials and tribulations and doubts, Lord? No. But at the end of the day, Father, Lord, as I have prayed and I'm praying for these brothers and sisters, that, Lord, we will not linger, Lord, in that place or in that space where we doubt you or we doubt your love, God, because where you were, Lord, your love is. David say that I can go to hell. I can go up and sideways and hide in the rocks, Lord. There still you are. And where you are, Lord, your love is. Lord, I pray that if everything is taken away, everything is done to us, Lord, at the end of the day, God, we will know that you still love us and you always love us, Lord. So we are grateful for that, Lord, assurance, and we pray that God, it will linger in us, Lord. This coming week, prepare us, Father Lord, to minister to you and to bring you glory and honor, Father God. And for them that are ailing this afternoon, sickness, Father God, I pray that, Lord, you will heal them. Financial breakthroughs, Lord, provide, O oh God. Other miracles, Father Lord, there's so many represented in this place. Lord, I pray in your own way, in your own timing, God. Father, attend to them because we know that you know you're sovereign, you're mighty, you're able, you're good. And we thank you for this afternoon, this evening. So we welcome you, Lord. Minister to us, Lord. We praise you and we glorify you. And everyone say, amen. All right, if you turn with me to 267. Come behold the wondrous mystery in the dawning of the King. Be the theme of heaven's praises, robed in frail humanity. In our longing, in our darkness, now the light of life has come. Look to Christ who condescended took on flesh to ransom us <clears throat> come behold the wondrous mystery he the perfect son of man in his living in his suffering never trace nor stain of sin see the true and better adam 
come to save the hellbound man, man. Christ the great and short fulfillment of the law, in Him we stand. <clears throat> come behold the wondrous mystery, Christ the Lord upon the tree. In the stead of ruined sinners hangs the Lamb in victory. See the price of our redemption, see the Father's plan unfold, bringing many sons to glory, grace unmeasured and love untold. Come behold the wondrous mystery, slain by death the God of life, but no grace could e'er restrain him praise the lord he is alive what a foretaste of deliverance how unwavering our hope christ in power resurrected as we will be when he comes what a foretaste of deliverance how unwavering our hope Christ in power resurrected as we will be when he comes as we will be when he comes Amen, Amen. Thank you, Brother Keon. I've been listening to that song played a lot in the foyer, and it's, it, it's encouraging. Um, use your talents for God. Say, I can't play piano. Neither could he a couple months ago. Amen. You, you just, you want to do something for God, you should try it. I mean, that, that's, that's what it's about. Oh, I appreciate that greatly. Grab your Bibles this evening. Uh, Matthew chapter number 23, Matthew 23. We'll look at maybe a reminder tonight in a unique way. Uh, old article I came across in uh, one of Pastor Siva's notebooks that I have in my office. Uh, many times, sometimes I just pick up some of his old sermons and some of his old things and just look through them. And a lot of good information in there. And uh, tonight we're going to look at the idea of one, um, but Matthew 23. Let's read verses 23 through 26, and then we'll get into this this evening. Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of men and anise and cumin, and have anointed the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, which strain at the gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, and the outside of them may be clean also. Let's pray, and we'll get into this this evening. Lord, we just come to you tonight, just as we look to this reminder for our lives of how easy it is to put on a fake front to uh, Act in a certain manner, Lord, and I pray that this will just be an encouragement, a reminder, a, a, a constant uh, footing in our mind this evening as you have expressed in Scripture how serious the matter is as you confronted the Pharisees and scribes of the day. Lord, help us to be mindful of our Christian walk with you and to be sincere and truthful in all manners of it. Lord, I ask that you be with this sermon now in Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's interesting because um, the article kind of started and it says right at the top, spare tire religion. Spare tire religion. So obviously I stopped and read it because, well, it's interesting. 
And you get to thinking about the idea of a spare tire and really uh, what you use it for. And it really applies to Matthew 23 here. And understand this, it's not a fact that a lot of religious people use their religion like we would a spare tire. I mean, there's not a concrete evidence, but I would say there are a lot of areas of our lives that you could say, well, you're kind of acting like a spare tire, like you're using a spare tire. And what do we mean by that? Tonight, understand this, a spare tire is usually the worst tire on the car. I mean, that's just the truth. If I go and purchase new tires, I like to have a full-size spare tire. Amen. I want to have a full size, but I'm not going to buy a brand new tire and put it on as my spare and keep driving on the bad one. I'm going to take the one that's more worn, the one that's not as pretty, the one that's not going to get me all the way down the road, and I'm going to put that as the spare Right, uh, uh, Most of us would use the best tires that we have available at all times and then just the worst one as the spare. So what are we saying? Spare tire religion is simply bad because it will not stand hard use. What, what, what am I doing? I'm, I'm leaving on this facade I'm pretending that I'm good. I'm pretending that I'm going to be able to stand through the hard times, stand through the test of times. But in all reality, spare tires aren't made for that. No one anticipates putting on a spare tire and just using it for the longevity. You know it's meant to be there just as a caution, But we use it and we think, listen, at my religion, my Christianity, you know what? It's not the strongest. It's not the most dedicated. But I'm going to say that it's something it's not. I'm going to pretend it's a good tire, so to speak, but it's really just the spare. I'm going to portray it as something that's going to be able to last, but in all truth, the first sign of trouble, and I'm out of here. Spare tire religion is not going to satisfy God. Spare tire is this. It's used only in emergencies, isn't it? It's the only time I think to myself, you know what? I'm going to put on my spare tire. It's not going out right now and saying, you know what sounds fun? I'm just going to swap my tires real quick. No. You know why? Because I don't like changing tires. The guys at uh, Discount Tire don't even like changing tires. Why do I know that? Because they take forever. And nobody wants to change a tire. So in this idea of this spare tire religion, understand just as a spare tire is only used in emergencies, a lot of uh, Christians or claiming to be Christians, they pull out their Christian lifestyle only when something hard comes up, only when it gets difficult, only when they get troubled, only when they get frustrated, only when you fill in the blank and you say, you know what, now's the time that I'm going to pray instead of every day. Now I'm going to show up to church instead of every opportunity I have. Now I'm going to get involved in ministry when life's been bad, but God's been good. And now all of a sudden, God's been good for a while. So I'm going to maybe pull out my spare tire again. We got to be cautious. I understand this. Never are the spare tires taken from the back of the car unless it's an emergency. The issue here, something that was written in the article says many church members never show any indication of being a Christian unless there is an emergency. Oh, it hits hard. So often we see that, I mean, you know it, I know it. We can name the names. Pray for those people. Ultimately, pray that you never fall into this idea that my religion is just something that I can pull out when I'm in trouble. God, here I am. But when I'm on the mountain, God, there I go. Be very careful. 
Understand this this evening, a spare tire can be put on at will. It can be put on at will. As I mentioned, you, I don't want to, but I could. If I, if I really had a desire to go out and swap my tires, I could at any time. You as the driver, as the owner of a car, you can go out and you can put on the spare tire. And you know what's interesting is that oftentimes we see Christians doing just that. Whenever they so see fit, now all of a sudden, Christian living, their religious, uh, uh, what you could say uh, is um, your responsibility as a Christian, you just do what? You just put it on as you so wish at any time. Well, you know what? There's this event going on. So tonight, I'm just going to take off take off my good, my, my solid, my, my, my truthful uh, way that I should be living. I'm, I'm going to put on this spare tire mentality to where, you know what, it's not the best and I'm just going to uh, uh, use what's poor and use these excuses and just go and behave however I want to. It's that mentality of it's not what I should be using, but I'm going to pull it out because I can. Optional Christianity should never be an option to the Christian. That, that, that's something that I think many times, especially as adults, we fall into this idea that I'm a grown person, I can do what I want to, and you can, but in relationship to God, you should do what he wants you to, not just what you want to. I'll say it to the, the young people, I'll say it to everybody, it's exciting being an adult, I never want to go back to the high school years, I don't want anything to do with it. I had fun as a high school student. I just don't want to do that anymore. Why? Because I'm a grown-up now. Woo! <laughs> I say, well, that's dumb. We're all grown. Yeah, I get it. But you wouldn't want to go back to having somebody tell you what to do every day. Ha having curfews, having limitations, having all of these things. You just don't want to. So the idea sometimes that we allow our minds to, to wrestle with is the idea that, guess what? God is in control. And you say, no, I want to be in control, pastor. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. That's spare tire Christianity. That's giving God not what he deserves but what you see fit to give him. Man, what, what do we see? Man, I don't want to go to the special meetings. I don't want to go to the Sunday nights. I don't want to go when God is, is really getting a hold of my, my heart and my life. I don't, I don't want to give up my time for God. I just want to give him what's left. That, that, that little thought always plays in my mind is, we're supposed to give God what's right, not what's left. We're supposed to give God what's best, not what we feel is best. Spare tire can be taken off at will as well. It can be put on when you want to. I'm going to get rid of what's best in my life. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, to, you know, act like everybody else. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on the, the, the world when I'm in the world. And then I'll put back the good tire when I'm with the church and with my Christian friends. And then uh, I, I kind of got those mixed up. But the spare tire can what, be taken off when those special things come up. And we say, you know what? I, I think I should be able to go to the concerts and the shows and the, all of this stuff and just neglect God. And, and understand this. I'll, I'll say this till I, I'm dead and gone. My wife knows this. God's more concerned about where your heart is than your butt is. We all know that. But your heart should be where God wants it to be. And ultimately, your butt should be where God wants it to be. It's important. Spare tires usually look good. Not always. But, but the tire looks, you know what, okay, I, I, I like having matching spare tires. I mean, that's just me. I don't always. Right? But I want it to look like the other ones. I had my, my 91... Toyota 4Runner, 
in Phoenix. I loved that thing to death. It was so top heavy. I felt like I was going to tip over every time I hit a curve or whatever, but it was wonderful. I loved it. And the tires on that thing were expensive. I did not appreciate that as a young individual about to get married, but I loved the car. And as I went and the uh, first time I had to purchase new tires and they said back in that day uh, that my new tire was going to be $230 for one. And I said, you, okay, <laughs> but I wanted the tires to match. So I forked up the money. So my spare tire looked good. It looked like everything else. It looked like it fit the role. It looked like it belonged. It just looked like one of the others. You, you know, spare tire religion often gets this idea that, well, you look the part, but you're not really acting it. You're not really cut out to fit into the part. The issue is, uh, most of the spare tires that any of us have ever had, and I'm sure you understand this, um, there's some kind of issue with them. That's why it's not your, your everyday use tire anymore. This is a just in case. There's a slow leak in it, but it'll get you down the road. Well, it's, it's a little bald, but it'll still get the job done. My wife appreciates that about me. Hey, we, we got to get this idea, though, that, listen, don't just get by with your Christianity. Don't just say, well, you know, I, I still have issues in all of these areas, but God loves me, so they're okay in my life. Careful with that. Man, he's really getting on to the to Pharisees and the scribes, and he's like, guys, what is your problem? You're paying the tithe of men and uh, anise and cumin and, and you have anointed the weightier matters of the law, the judgments and the mercy and the faith and ye ought to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides, he says, would strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. What weird language, right? You ever just read the Bible and you're like, what are you talking about? Hey, you strain at a gnat. Well, what's he say? Hey, you're making a big deal about a small issue. According to the law, gnat was an unclean, right? It was unclean. So there, it's talking about, man, you're going to strain your water because one little gnat landed on it. But you're still so negative, so unloving, so critical, so judgmental, so lacking in mercy. You're swallowing a camel. You're, you're holding on to these big, huge issues, but you're presenting it like, oh, I'm so holy. Look, there's a little gnat in my water. I'm getting rid of it. I look good. You know what? The issue is when a spare tire looks good, you, you ever, I had these spare tires. They were never good, right? They were a spare for a reason. But you ever get that every now and then you just start shaking or you start bumping? And you know the tire's got a bubble or something on it. And you know, okay, this is a sign of why that's my spare tire or why I need to use the spare tire in the first place. Here, here, here's a big issue, right? The way that some people just blow up in their day-to-day -day lives. The, the way a Christian just goes about and at the smallest little thing that comes up in their lives, they just lose it. It breaks, it breaks your heart when you see those individuals who you think are so faithful in church and so faithful in their walks with God and then something happens and they blow up and they never darken the doors of the church again. That's a spare tire religion. What a large number of Christians that are unfortunately living this type of lifestyle when the smallest of things cause them to leave what God desires for their life. Spare tires will not stand the heat. We know this all too well coming from Phoenix. They just don't last. They won't stick around. 
the article kind of goes to explain how the heat affects the spare tire, but really how sometimes the Holy Spirit is just trying to move and work and he's, he's heating you up a little bit. He's causing you a little discomfort. Hey, he, he's causing you to really consider things and he's, he's making you really focus on what's going on in your life or what you need to correct in your life and the spare tire religion. Have you ever seen some church members and how they blow out? They can't handle it when a lot of people are getting on fire for God and they're showing up and they're serving and they're singing. And man, I remember those days, even in youth group, when you try to serve God and you start to sing and you start to serve and everybody else is like, whoa, wait, whoa, what is going on? I'm out of here. This, this is too much for me to handle. Man, when was the last time you let God get a hold of your life and, and move and you got excited when somebody else was excited? You know what I love seeing? Miss Ruth. Half of you are like, who's Miss Ruth? Meet Miss Ruth. Sunday morning, she comes on our senior bus. She is the sweetest lady. And she usually sits in the back row, so... Um, I guess you won't see her, amen? <laughs> but she sits on the back row, and unless you're sitting next to her or up front, man, Miss Ruth, we start singing, and she just does this. Yeah. And she's just as happy as can be. And she's just singing, and she's just smiling, and she's just loving. And she says, I love this church. She's like, oh, it's so friendly, it's so loving. She's like, oh, this is my home. And she gets so excited. And you know what makes people uncomfortable? In the Baptist church, God is so good. Right? Hey, let's start singing a song, and the person next to you start doing this, you're going to be like, <laughs> right? Hey, I started clapping during that kid's song, and half of you guys were like, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, we, we got to be mindful. Man, a spare tire, they're not going to stand the heat. God's trying to move and they don't want anything to do with it. Spare tires are not dependable. Spare tire religion is not dependable. If you have this mindset that you can just change it out whenever you want to, you're just going to blow in, blow up, blow out, whatever you want. It's just a spare. It's not that important to me. It's not dependable in what, when you get to a hard place in life. Man, I'm driving down a hot, uh, uh, rocky road somewhere. I don't want a spare tire on my car. I don't. Man, I'm going up in the mountains and I'm gonna be driving through snow and I'm gonna be facing weather. I don't want a spare tire. It's, it's not something that I want around. I, I don't want a, a, a fellow a Christian who's just going to flake out at any sign of distress or, man, I, th this idea that, God, I'm going to be there for you when I'm in a good place, but during the bad stuff, that's what we're talking about. You're, you're, you're presenting yourself like something that, that is so good. But he says in verse 26, thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within. Man, make sure that you're good with God. Make sure you're right with God. Make sure you're following him, willing, faithfully. Putting all manner of malice and hypocrisy and envyings and hatred and malice, all of those things, put them aside. Think on the things that are true and pure and lovely and good. And man, that's Christianity. That's good tire Christianity. Man, there, there's, some, there's some issues with the mindset that we can just present ourselves to be good, but to be lacking in our lives. That, that we can, kind of what we talked about last Sunday night, we can point out the, the issues of everybody else when I have some of the greatest issues in my own life. 
What, what, what's the problem? The spare tire issue. We, 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 need, we need God to be uh, 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 getting us ready, making us prepared, uh, getting us aired up, <laughs> getting us sure. Man, any time that I see Christ ridiculing the Pharisees in Scripture, man, it, it really makes me think. Say, I just read through those parts as quick as I can. Read it again. <laughs> And they walk around like there's something special. I always, I always like the, I forget which chapter in Matthew it is where he talks about them walking around with their enlarged phylacteries and enlarged robes and, and all this idea that look how amazing I am. That, that phylactery is like a, a necklace that would have scriptures that they've memorized and that they teach from in like a, a I think of it like a gangster chain, you know. <laughs> My chain, my chain's bigger than yours, dog, right? But, but that's the idea. We walk around and we say, well, I, I go to church. I go to the prayer breakfast. I, I go to, to whatever. I show up for ladies. I, I show up for teens. I show up and I do all these things. And yet, at home, you don't see any of it. Take it on, take it off. Deal with it when I need to. Put it away when I don't want to. Man, this, this, this idea that we got to be looking on the inside, we got to clean ourselves up if we want to be presented to God in an outstanding, positive way. Make sure you're cleaning that which is within the cup and platter. That the outside of them may be clean also. It starts from the inside. Man, what you're thinking in your heart is going to eventually make its way out of your lips. We see that in Scripture. Man, the way that you're focused and the way that you're living internally is going to make its way out. And you can't just put on a suit when you're rotten inside. You can't just show up and expect everyone to say, well, they're obviously this amazing Christian when you're rotten inside. But what is he saying here? He says, woe unto you. You better be careful. You're so focused on certain things that really don't matter in the grand scheme of things because I want you to be a solid, firm, faithful, loving Christian. Clean yourself up so you can present yourself clean. Don't be like a Pharisee. Don't, don't, don't be the, 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 have the mindset rather that you can just live however you want to and then show up and everything's fine when you come in the doors. God doesn't want it. God doesn't deserve it. We as Christians need to be true. Be real. Man, so, so often I just, I, I, this idea that what the world could do. I think of that quote, right? Oh, what the world could do with one man who's fully surrendered to the will of God. Unfortunately, we don't know what that looks like yet. It's easy to get into our mindsets. Man, I, I pray that it's us. Be a church who's on fire for God, not just pretending to be. Be, be a Christian who's excited and serving God, not just pretending to be. Simple questions you ask yourself to double check, to see what type of tire you are, so to speak. Simple questions. Are you saved? Okay. Oh, I got that one, Pastor. I hope so. Do you read your Bible? Do you pray? Do you serve? Do you witness? Man, those, those five things 
are the core of Christianity. Salvation, scripture, prayer, witnessing, and serving. And if you're failing in some of those areas, make sure that you're cleaned up on the inside because a Christian lacking those things is a Christian struggling in certain areas of sin. That's just how it plays out. That's just what it is. So what is this tonight? Don't be a spare. Be the consistent, faithful, steady, true Christian that we're supposed to be. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Just these cautions that you give the Pharisees just for us to be mindful of. Lord, I, I pray that we're constantly reminding ourselves to be true, be faithful, be what we say we are. Lord, if we're to call ourselves Christians, Lord, I pray that you help us be just that. Lord, I'm so thankful for your word and for your church. So thankful for this congregation this place that you've allowed us to come together and serve together in. This church, Lord, is a mighty thing you established. You saw fit to put each and every one of us here with that sole purpose to bring glory, honor to you, to win the lost to a saving knowledge, to show the world that light that they may glorify you. Help us to be true. Be with this invitation now in Jesus' name, amen. Stand with me if you're able to. I don't know how God worked on your life. It was a fun little read for me. How it's easy to be a spare. But oh, how we need to just be the solid truth. How we need to be the real deal. Don't present yourself phony. Be real. Don't pretend you're something you're not. Don't put on a show. Don't be easily removed, ready to blow up or blow out. Be strong. Go ahead and sing, Brother Beck. I don't know if God laid something on your heart, but you come tonight and you deal with it. Miss tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it was a good Sunday, amen. I was encouraged this morning, just a, a good spirit, and uh, God's so good to us. Um, man, I was just thinking about that this afternoon, how good God is. Uh, it's overwhelming. Uh, even in those hard times, his goodness shines, and it's amazing to me. Oh, but don't forget Tiblo Days. I appreciate everyone who signed up this afternoon after this morning service. A lot going on at Tiblo Days always. We, got, we need people to walk. Just walk with our parade, our parade, our float in the parade. Right? Just, just, just be there with us. And that's so much fun. Uh, but then we need some people to help build out the float as well. We got some good ideas for this year. Uh, the theme is going to be Inside Out. Uh, it's a uh, um, kids movie. We try to do something relevant to really grab a hold of the young people and get their attention. Uh, if the kids aren't interested, the parents aren't interested and the grandparents really don't care, right? So make sure uh, to be a part of that. Pray for that. Uh, but uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, and then obviously at the booth, we're going to have uh, some face painting this year. Uh, we hand out popcorn for free every year. Um, but we're also going to have uh, an area to sit and pray with people this year and just really be able to witness to them. And um, I, I just pray now for results, for decisions made even in that, even if it's just one person who shows up, comes and visits.
Uh, that's why we do these things, is to share our testimony, to share the gospel, to, to let people see our light. That's, that's the point of it. So be a part of that with our church. Uh, and then also, um, the backpacks are almost gone. So if you don't know about the backpacks, we're doing a big back to school push where we want to get school supplies to those who are in need. Uh, I'm going to be going to a lot of the schools and just dropping off some backpacks. Uh, we are going to put tracts and Bibles in them as well, uh, just to share the gospel. Uh, but what an encouragement we could be to a family. Because every year I, I know there are families who are like, I don't know how I'm going to get X for school this year. And, and guess what? It's in like two weeks. <laughs> so it's coming quick. Uh, but most of the backpacks are gone. There are lists. If you just want to bring some supplies, say, I can't fill a whole backpack with all those things. That's okay. Bring pencils. Bring some paper, uh, and that's such a blessing to those. But let's be dismissed in a word of prayer tonight, and uh, have a good week, amen? Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for your goodness in our lives and just how exciting it is, Lord, that you saw fit to save us. Lord, how wonderful a thought that is, and I pray that it continues to just drive us forward as followers of you, as members of Elm Grove, Lord, that we focus so much of our lives onto what you desire for us to do. Lord, help us to be mindful that it's easy, as we've talked this morning, to assume that we know best. But Lord, ultimately, you know what's best. Help us to focus on that. Help us to be patient and wait for you in all manners of life. Help us to not be easily uh, um, put off to not be easily irritated, to not have that spare tire mentality where we can just be a Christian in Christian circles and be of the world in worldly circles and act certain ways around certain people. Lord, help us to be steadfast and, and sure as you are to us. Lord, be with us as we're dismissed. Bring us back safely on Wednesday. Continue to watch over our ministries and our endeavors to reach people with the gospel. We give this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.